Hi all and welcome to this video about the ECAM inventory, specifically the treatment stage of sanitation. In this video, I will create a treatment substage and enter data and also use the estimations that ECAM uses. And then also select treatment types in the context of entering data. And finally, talk about some more options for entering data in the treatment stage. Before I get started, I would like to show you all my configurations page. I've created an assessment called Wastewater Treatment Peru. I have an assessment period of one year and I've selected Peru as the country. To get started in the inventory, I'll click on sanitation and add some basic information about sanitation. In this case, a resident population of 400,000. And then I will use the estimation that ECAM gives me. So already starting here, ECAM uses some constants to give an estimation for the amount of generated wastewater. I can also, of course, and this number is often available, so I expect that you might be entering a manual number here. Note that this is a volume of generated wastewater in total. It doesn't have to be that all of this wastewater then enters your treatment system. So to start entering data about the treatment system itself, I will create a substage of treatment. I could give it a different name here, but I won't. I'll just stay with treatment one. And then I'll begin entering data here. I will give the service population to be 400,000. This means that all the people in my city are serviced by my facility. One thing to note when you enter data, just make sure to not use any commas. It will put its own commas in and, and uh, ECAM can interpret a comma as a, as a decimal sometimes, so just don't use commas. Um, and then you can use the estimations given here or enter your data manually like I did or, or like I also explained for the general data. So basically you have two different options. One is to use constants in an ECAM and the other is to enter data manually. Since this is an example, I'm going to use the estimations, but of course, if you have the data, it's best to use the more specific data. So here I will use this estimation. Again, this means that 100% of my wastewater is being treated. And then I'm just going to also assume that 100% of the treated water is then discharged to a water body. I will also use the influent BOD5 load. And then it gets a bit interesting. This effluent BOD5 load, it can either come, it can come from the data that you have from your facility if you're measuring what the effluent is, or maybe you know because of some regulations. But you can also enter some characteristics of your facility and use constants based on those characteristics. So in this case, I'm working in a primary and secondary treatment plant with biological treatment. So I can use this 15% to get an estimate for my effluent BOD5 load. My total nitrogen load in the effluent is again the same. If you're using your own data, make sure that you get it into kilograms per your assessment period. So in this case, it would be kilograms per year. Um, okay, you also have grams and tons available to you as well. So you could choose that before entering it. And then I will continue total nitrogen load in the effluent, also the same treatment, primary and secondary bi biological treatment. And then the nature of the data that you enter changes a bit. These are emission factors and not total values. So this has to do with how much greenhouse gas is being emitted by your treatment process itself. And again, you can enter this data manually and have a custom value. It's unlikely that you're measuring this specifically in your plant, but if you are, of course, use the custom value. If not, then you can also use the characteristics of the facility here. I'm going to just do a centralized aerobic treatment plant in this case because that fits the characteristics of my facility, but feel free to look for the options and see which one fits best. 
I will do the same for my nitrous oxide emission factor. And then the discharge emission factors are not based on the treatment plant, but actually on where it's discharged. So in this case, I am discharging in to something other than a reservoir like an estuary, so I'm tier two here. And then I'm here, I am in this freshwater fresh estu estuarine and marine discharge tier. Then energy consumed from the grid, I will enter as two million three. There's the data that I have from my facility. And then here, the submission factor for grid electricity is also taken from the country that you entered from the configurations page. You can also change it if you want to here or also in the configurations page. And then I can estimate the amount of sludge removed. This is often might be known by the facility, so you can enter it here, make sure that it's in dry weight. But in this case, I don't have the estimation. So I am going to use a high rate trickling filter with mixed sludge because that's what I have in my facility. BOD removed as sludge. Similar question, and I have an aerobic treatment plant with high rate treatment with mixed sludge. So I will go ahead and select that. Now you can see that I have this whole upper section filled out. I can show output so you all can see that I have some greenhouse gas emissions already calculated in here. Use highlight mode to show, for example, that when I go to electricity, it has to do with the energy consumed from the grid and the emission factor for grid electricity, and also for the treatment process that all of these characteristics of water are used. I have a zero for sludge management because I haven't entered any data yet about the management of sludge. Those options exist down here. So you can see that you then have a bunch of these options to toggle yes or no. If you have fuel engines, if you're producing biogas, if you want to evaluate treatment performance, this is if you have several different tests for the quality of water that you're producing. Um, if you want to evaluate some pumps that you all are using, if you are trucking water, if you want to evaluate reuse of water, and then finally sludge management, and then at the end you have costs. One of the options that's frequently used is sludge management because it's really part of every treatment process. When you toggle yes, you can see that more options than come up for different ways that you might be handling your sludge. I am going to stop this video now and make a second video about the treatment stage of sanitation in ECAM, where I'll go more into biogas and sludge. I hope this was helpful for you all and make sure to check out other videos for more information.